You may pet the tiny bear, but be gentle. The Magister miniaturized him specially at great cost. Safely. Do you think you can have it done by midweek? That when Thren needs it. Quartermaster Thren understands you. Looks fine.
Your kind killed the most holy. Lies. Your kind let her die. Shut your mouth, mate! Enough! Knight Captain! That is not my title. We are not Templars any longer. We are all part of the Inquisition. And what does that mean, exactly? Back already, Chancellor. Haven't you done enough? I'm curious, Commander, as to how your Inquisition and its Herald will restore order as you've promised. Of course you are. Back to your duties, all of you. Mages and Templars were already at war. Now they're blaming each other for the Divine's death. Which is why we require a proper authority to guide them back to order. Who? You? Random clerics who weren't important enough to be at the Conclave. The Rebel Inquisition and its so-called Herald of Andraste? I think not. I don't know. The Inquisition seems about as functional as any young family. How many families are on the verge of splitting into open warfare with themselves? Yes, because that would never happen to the Chantry. Centuries of tradition will guide us. We are not the upstart eager to turn over every apple cart. Remind me, why are you allowing the Chancellor to stay? Clearly, your Templar knows where to draw the line. He's toothless. There's no point turning him into a martyr simply because he runs at the mouth. The Chancellor's a good indicator of what to expect in Val Royo, however. How widespread is the violence between mages and Templars? Impossible to say. Your organization flouting the Chantry's authority will not help matters. With the Conclave destroyed, I imagine the war between mages and Templars is renewed with interest. The mages and Templars are fighting, even though we don't know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. Exactly why all this should be left to a new divine. If you are innocent, the Chantry will establish it as so. Or we'll be happy to use someone as a scapegoat. You think nobody cares about the truth? We all grieve Justinia's loss. But you won't grieve if the Herald of Andraste is conveniently swept under a carpet. I'll make sure they see reason in Valroyo. I pray you're right. I will take these injury reports to research a Minave. Greetings, Herald of Andraste. How fares your quest to seal the breach? Not as well as it should. How can people focus on trivialities when faced with the breach? It is easy for us to imagine that mundane matters fall aside in tumultuous times. The Chant of Light does not speak of feeding troops or arranging meetings or any such mundane concerns. But every organizational detail you contend with, Andraste herself once faced. These trivialities are steps on your path to victory, even if history never remembers them. I thought I made it clear that I'm not the Herald of Andraste. I understand. Whatever you believe, there remains a task to be done. If the faith of the people is nothing but a tool, then I beg you to use it well. We will all perish if you do not. In any case, I pray this Inquisition proves less brutal than its predecessor. Can you tell me about the original Inquisition? The original Inquisition was formed after the First Blight, well before the Chantry as we know it. The Inquisitors were hunters, zealots, who tracked and killed cultists and dangerous mages. As Andraste rose to power, the Inquisition came into her service. Instead of hunting those who would do harm, the Inquisitors spread the chant of light by force. No wonder everyone is so nervous around us. Who chose that name? Divine Justinia herself, 
I understand that this was not a popular decision. In any case, once the chant of light had spread far and wide, there was less need for zealots. The Inquisitors became the seekers of truth, and eventually the Templars. And now the Inquisition has been called again to restore order. By force. Do you know what impresses me most about the original Inquisition? They fought horrific battles, killed and died for their cause, and when it was time, they put their swords away. Perhaps the name was divine, Justinia's message, that when the Inquisition is needed, it will strike without mercy. But when its work is done, it will put its sword away. Do you know who the Grand Clerics will choose as the next Divine? It is a difficult decision. All the obvious candidates perished with Divine Justinia at the Conclave. The Grand Clerics are terrified of the Inquisition. They will not decide soon, and I fear they will not decide wisely. Whoever is chosen needs the Inquisition's support. No one else seems likely to seal the breach. How are the people doing after what happened at the Conclave? They are scaled, of course. Many have lost homes or loved ones. I doubt many will sleep well until you have sealed the breach. I have offered what help I can. The rest is for the Inquisition. What more do you wish to know? How are the villagers in Haven doing? They are terrified. Many of them came here because the war between the Mages and the Templars destroyed their homes. In their minds, the death of a Divine has destroyed any chance of peace. To that, at the breach. Farmers have fled their fields. If we do not restore order, half of Thedas may starve. What are you doing to help these people? My sisters and I have been tending to the injured, as best we are able. Some refugees come with food, while others arrive empty-handed. I have helped ensure that all have enough to eat. Beyond that, many simply wish the familiar comfort of the Chant of Light. It is little enough work to offer some comfort to those in pain. Do you have information on people elsewhere? The refugees in the hinterlands are desperate. Without help, starvation or war will claim many lives. Villagers in Crestwood are besieged by their own dead. They have sent word begging for assistance. People are vanishing in the hills of Empreuse du Lyon. It may be demons or something worse, but they are terrified. More than that, I cannot say. It is a chaotic time for all in Olay and Ferelden. Farewell. Until next time. I greet you. Is there anything I can do to help you or your people? My healers would benefit from more supplies. We have run short of even common goods with so many wounded. If you could deliver this list and the items on it to Quartermaster Thren, she could get us what we need. It may not seem like much, but it would enable my healers to save many lives. Farewell. Until next time. Lord of the Rebellion. Uh, may I have a moment? That will help. Yes, Ambassador? I'd like to discuss your parents. What would you like to know? I'd like to dispatch a courier asking the bands of House Trevelyan to align themselves with us. What are your thoughts? Should we approach your family for their formal support of the Inquisition? If that's what you want, I'll send a letter to my family. They'll respect the request if it comes from me. Wonderful. That will save time. Valroyo has noted your lineage. It gives the Inquisition some legitimacy, although not so much as we'd hoped. Why not? You are from Ostwick. Orlesian nobles consider the Free Marches somewhat... quaint. Even though I'm a mage, that doesn't give them pause. Not an unfamiliar sight. Mages from noble families are given more leeway. Besides, Ostwick Circle had a reputation for being rather sedate. You've never been bored until you've lived in a tower of studious, well behaved mages. Even our circle's fall was quiet. Everyone just left. 
No wonder the people's faith in Templars has been shaken. Templars in Ostwick's circle were as discreet as they were well paid. They're fortunate they did not receive a seeker. Lady Cassandra would not ignore an extra payroll. <sighs> there must be things you miss about the circle here in the mountains. I hope you don't find the living conditions in Haven too drastic for someone of your station. This can't be what you're accustomed to, Ambassador. One adjusts. I stay busy. It helps take my mind from our surroundings. And the cold, and the wildlife, and the lack of civilization for miles around. <sighs> Why anyone lived here before we found Andras's ashes, I cannot imagine. Don't worry about me. Haven's more than livable. Really? If that is how you feel, I'm pleased to hear it. Until next time, my lord. Darkness comes upon me. I shall embrace the light. We'll post soldiers a safe distance from the temple. Our best guess at safe, anyway. Let us begin. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask him. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry says. I will go with him. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. The city still mourns. Just a guess, Seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. My Lord Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market, 
I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. They wish to protect the people from us? We knew there would be some kind of reaction. But I didn't expect the Templars to make an appearance. The people may just be assuming what the Templars will do. I've heard of no concrete plans. You think the Order's return to the Fold, maybe? To deal with us upstarts? I know Lord Seeker Lucius. I can't imagine him coming to the Chantry's defense. Not after all that's occurred. Return to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As you say, my lady. Not open today. Not until this fast is over, at least. Too many swords out. Templars will stand for us and El Valroyo return to morning. As you are the only ones who appear to care about the hole in the sky. But the Chantry is insistent. Good people of Valroyo, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart. Silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of a murderer. Well, wonder no more. Behold, the so-called Herald of Andraste, claiming to rise where our beloved fell. We say this is a false prophet. The Maker would say no mage in our hour of need. I make no such claim. I wasn't sent here by Andraste or the Maker. I'm simply trying to close the breach. It threatens us all. It's true. The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be safe once more. Still yourself. She is beneath us. Was that display supposed to impress me? On the contrary, it wasn't for you at all. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with... You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement. Raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet. You should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. 
The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. If you're not here to help the Chantry, then you just came to make speeches. I came to see what frightens old women so, and to laugh. But Lord Seeker, what if he really was sent by the Maker? What if... You are called to a higher purpose. Do not question. I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing, and the Inquisition less than nothing. Templars, Val Royo is unworthy of our protection. We march. Charming fellow, isn't he? Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? Do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man, never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. Do you think he can be reasoned with? I hope so. If not him, there are surely others in the Order who don't feel as he does. Either way, we should first return to Haven and inform the others. Excuse me, but is what they're saying real? The Inquisition's going to fix the hole in the sky? That's what we're attempting, yes. No one is doing anything. The Chantry is useless, and the Templars, Andraste. I never thought they'd abandon us. Listen, your camp will need food. I have contacts. We'll have deliveries there in days. You want to help the Inquisition? Never been part of something this big before, but if your Inquisition's going to seal the sky, I want to help. Head to Haven, then. We need good people. I don't know if I'm that, but it will be nice to see. Thank you. What's that? An arrow with a message? It seems change is on the wind. Our Templars left. The Chantry left. promised they defend us. I believe that messenger is trying to get our attention. You are the Herald of Andraste, are you not? I have an invitation for you. Well, this has all been a frustrating mess. Templars and Chantry and especially the mages, just everything. What is the Grand Cathedral thinking? We must have a new divine. She will show us the way. Open? Uh, yes, as open as I can be. Uh, if you've a need for the well cut or the sparkling, perhaps I can help. At the vat. This 
victory must please you greatly, Sika Cassandra. We came here seeking only to speak with the mothers. This is not our doing, but yours. And you had no part in forcing our hand? Do not delude yourself. Now we have been shown up by our own Templars, in front of everyone. And my fellow clerics have scattered to the wind along with their convictions. Just tell me one thing. If you do not believe you are the Maker's Chosen, then what are you? A victim of circumstance, nothing more. That is... more comforting than you might imagine. I suppose it is out of our hands now. We shall all see what the Maker plans in the days to come. How many Templars turned on the Chantry, exactly? <laughs> they rebelled across Thedas. Some remained loyal, but not enough to call them the Order. The White Spire here in the capital was the largest garrison, but now it stands empty. Perhaps more shall flock to the Lord Seeker's banner now. How far has faith waned, I wonder? How are people responding to all of this? Despair. Fear. We mourn her holiness. The people look to the sky and wonder how long before terror comes for us all. There must be a way through this. Is it you? The Templars? The Maker's will? We abandoned our duties. We servants of the faith. Now we can only pray. You're obviously skeptical. What do you believe I am? Our Divine. Her Holiness is dead. I have seen evidence for everything, except what would comfort me. That doesn't answer my question. For you to be true, a great many things must be false. And if you are false, a great many things must have failed. There is chaos ahead, whatever your intentions. So what happens now? Will the Chantry continue to denounce me? <laughs> we have already done so. And what good has it done us? Now it falls on us to select a new divine, if we can. And leave the next step to her. Provided such a selection is even possible. I truly don't know. Any revered mother who could have followed Justinia died at the Conclave. What becomes of us, and your Inquisition, is in the Maker's hands now. Where is the Lord Seeker taking the Templars? I can't begin to guess the Lord Seeker's mind. He could not have abandoned his intended role more completely. There must be sense to what we can't see. Must there? Rebellion seems popular in certain quarters, doesn't it, Seeker? Is crafting the Templars into a new power really any worse than declaring a rival to the Chantry itself? What were you hoping the Lord Seeker would do exactly? Put aside his war against the mages and find common purpose against something much more dire. Obviously. He has other plans. With the knights vigilant slain at the Conclave, there is nothing more we can do. Perhaps there is something we can do. I'd like to believe that, Seeker. I truly would. I suppose we can expect renewed effort against the mages from him, and yet more chaos. It's not too late. The Chantry could still help us and come out on top. If only that were true. What's to stop you from trying? We are not looking for a winning horse. We are simply trying to do the right thing.
There must be something here. I don't think they knew. Yes, I'm sorry. Minding the duties of the ailing mother, Havara, I am rather overwhelmed. Forgive me. I am unsure whether I meant to extend chantry services to you, and that troubles me greatly. Inquisition, eh? I'll sell. But if the Chantry censures you, I'm not liable. as well? Same old. Ah, the Herald of Andraste. 
Is there something I might help you with? No. Thank you, sister. Make her go with you. Sky Maker, you were the sky. When there was no earth, you were the earth. When there was nothing, you were everything. Is a shop. Uh, I maintain a premises wherein customers of a certain affluence entertain the purchase of my ware. So yes, a uh, shop. Don't you mean wares? No, I mean ware. I have one item available for purchase. It is far too expensive for it merely to be sold. You may gaze upon it and dream of the wealth required to possess it as have lords and kings, and then you may leave and purchase things from shops more aligned with your station. How do you keep the doors open on a shop with one item? My shop is a destination. Luminaries of every description journey here to see what is denied to them. Some pay tribute in the vain hope I will barter. They do not have the will to pay the price. They require a bargain to justify the spend, to ease their conscience. That would defeat the entirety of the purpose. I can't see it. Tell me what it is. If you have to ask, you are not the one to buy it. I need to know if I can use it. And again, the point is missed. If mere use is your concern, you should go elsewhere. The person who claims this will not be known for using it. They will be known because they paid for it. I don't see why this is special. Anyone can overprice something. To overprice an item, the item must have a known value already. It is then priced over what it is worth. This... this has only the value I have set. It has never had another. It is not overpriced. It is priced. So, you sell one very expensive item, and it's worth it? Let me now interrupt the inevitable defense of your thrift. I'm sure you have treasures, and you will have many more. You could parade them from here to Halam Shiral, but none of that would allow you to say you have purchased this. The item is irrelevant. The price is worth it. Well, goodbye then. Yes. Well, it's easy.
If I might have a moment of your time. Grand Enchanter Fiona? Leader of the Mage Rebellion. Is it not dangerous for you to be here? I heard of this gathering, and I wanted to see the fabled Herald of Andraste with my own eyes. If it's help with the breach you seek, perhaps you should look among your fellow mages. That would have been my first choice if you'd been willing to speak with us. We're willing now. That's the important thing. Consider this an invitation to Redcliffe. Come, meet with the mages. An alliance could help us both, after all. I hope to see you there. Au revoir, my Lord Herald. Come, let us return to Haven. Andraste, how much did you expend to discover me? It must have weakened the Inquisition immeasurably. I don't know who you are. You don't fool me. I'm too important for this to be an accident. My efforts will survive in victories against you elsewhere. Just say what? What is that? <laughs> Squishy one, but you heard me, right? Just say what? Rich tits always try for more than they deserve. Blah, blah, blah! Obey me. Arrow in my face. So, you followed the notes well enough. Glad to see you're... You're kind of plain, really. All that talk, and then you're just a person. I mean, it's all good, isn't it? The important thing is, you glow. You're the herald thingy. Some believe I'm the Herald of Andraste, but who are you, and what's this about? No idea. I don't know this idiot from manners. 
My people just said the Inquisition should look at him. Your people? Elves? <laughs> no. People, people. Name's Sarah. This is cover. Get round it. For the reinforcements. Don't worry. Someone tipped me their equipment shed. They've got no breaches. really came through with that tip. No breaches. <laughs> so, Herald of Andraste. You're a strange one. I'd like to join. Well, how about we get to know each other first? You know, names and such. One name. No, wait, two. It's... Well, it's like this. I sent you a note to look for hidden stuff by my friends. The friends of Red Jenny. That's me. Well, I'm one. So is a fence in Montfort, some woman in Kirkwall. There were three in Starkhaven, brothers or something. It's just a name, yeah? It lets little people, friends, be part of something while they stick it to nobles they hate. So here, in your face, I'm Sarah. The friends of Red Jenny are sort of out there. I use them to help you. Plus arrows. The Inquisition is almost an army now. Can you add to it? Here's how it is. You important people are up here, shoving your cods around. Blah, blah, I'll crush you. I'll crush you. Mm -hmm. I'll crush you. <clears throat> then you've got generals and oath belchers. And sure, you have soldiers. Like the dead guys protecting that other dead guy. All those helmets, and what gave them up? Some drunk gets a key lifted because someone else is pissed about bills. So no, I'm not Captain Swordface, or Marchy. But if you don't listen down here too, you risk your breaches. Like those guards? I stole their... Look, do you need people or not? I want to get everything back to normal. Like you. So who are your friends of Red Jenny? You must know them. Oh, it's not hard to understand if you're not trying to waste your day on it. Someone little always hates someone big. And unless you don't eat, sleep, or piss, you're never far from someone little. Doesn't always work out, but a lot of people hated this guy. Someone got a laugh, someone got even, someone got paid. And someone has to have explained to them that free help is good. Back there, you wanted to know if I glowed. Why? That's what you do, innit? You walked out of somewhere, and now you glow. Andraste's Herald. True or not, it seemed like the easiest way to know it was you. True or not? Well, that's what they say and all. Look, don't get ahead yet. I want to help this... whatever it is. Inquisition. All right, Sarah. I can use you and your friends. Yes! Get in good before you're too big to like. That'll keep your breaches where they should be. Plus extra breaches because I have all these... You have merchants who buy that piss, yeah? Got to be worth something. Anyway, Haven. See you there, Herald. This will be grand.
Lord Trevelyan of Ostwick, representing the Inquisition. A pleasure, sir. We so rarely have a chance to meet anyone new. It is always the same crowd at these parties. So you must be a guest of Madame de Fer, or are you here for Duc Bastien? Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. What have you heard about me? Some say that when the veil opened, Andraste herself delivered you from the Fade. I'm not familiar with that name. I was invited here by First Enchanter Vivienne. Madame de Fer is a fond nickname the court has given Lady Vivienne. I've heard she finds it amusing. I've heard very little about Duke Bastien. He hasn't been seen much at court lately. His business with the Council of Heralds often takes him from home for long periods. It can't be good for a man of his years. And of course, there's the civil war. Bastien probably wishes to distance himself from the actions of his one-time son-in-law. Tearing up the Dales in a foolish bid for power? It will end in disgrace for Gaspar. Everyone knows it. Some of those storytellers may have gotten carried away. But only for the best effect. The Inquisition is a ripe subject for wild tales. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Washed up sisters and crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. I've never made any claims to holiness. What's your point? In front of all these people, you admit to being a pretentious usurper. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If you were a man of honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis, how unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly beg your pardon. You should. Whatever am I going to do with you, my dear? My lord, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? I think the Marquis has seen the error of his ways. By the grace of Andraste, you have your life, my dear. Do be more careful with it. <laughs> I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne. First Enchanter of Montsimard, an Enchantress to the Imperial Court. Your salon has certainly exceeded my expectations so far. I'm glad to keep you entertained, my dear. I wanted to meet face to face. It is important to consider one's connections carefully. With Divine Justinia dead, the Chantry's in shambles. Only the Inquisition might restore sanity and order to our frightened people. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance to your cause. What exactly can you do for the Inquisition? I am well versed in the politics of the Orlesian Empire. I know every member of the Imperial Court personally. I have all the resources remaining to the Circle at my disposal. And I'm a mage of no small talent. Will that do? Does that mean you'd be aiding the Inquisition from the Imperial Palace? Ordinarily, I would be happy to serve as liaison to the court, but these are not ordinary times. The veil has been ripped apart and there is a hole in the sky. It is now the duty of every mage to work towards sealing the breach. And so I would join the Inquisition on the field of battle.
You say you led the last of the loyal mages. Loyal to who? To the people of Thedas, of course. We have not forgotten the commandment, as some have, that magic exists to serve man. I support any effort to restore such order. So you're in favor of returning the mages to the circle, then? Where else can mages safely learn to master their talents? We need an institution to protect and nurture magic. Maker knows. Magic will find neither on its own. What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. Are you devout? What's your opinion of the Chantry? I was a great admirer of the late divine Justinia V. The Chantry, at its best, unites the disparate cultures of Thedas and looks after its most vulnerable. Had she lived, Justinia could have accomplished so much. The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that. Do you need something? May I ask you about the chop? I have no better answers on the topic than anyone might, but I'll tell you what I can. Thank you. So, this is it, huh? Oh, no, it's fine, yeah? It's just, I thought it'd be bigger. <laughs> Hear that? I meant the stronghold, but it sounded like... Well, it's funny, right? Anyway, stopping wars should earn more sovereigns than this. Need things back to normal for coins to be flowing again. Another reason the Templars and Mages need to be sat down. The Templars and the Mages. Most people pick a side. Most people are stupid. But where do you stand on the war? In the middle, with everyone, not a Trevelyan, or whatever. You know what I hear about mages? Nothing, until one goes all demony. Know what I hear about Templars? Nothing, until they take maybe mages. They're too busy to look up where the real questions are. Is there something else you're looking for? Like, what's behind all this? Maybe. I don't know. First things first, right? I help you. March, march, arrow, kick. 
then people stop being stupid, and everything starts to make sense again. Sound good to you, all chosen Lord Herald? I'm ready to give it a shot. That's all I can ask from anyone else. I'm in. It's an investment, yeah? Better pay off, too. Stupid war and everything. I had things to do. Chasing the Lord Seeker, I hear. Anyone who thinks they need Lord in front of the name, that's bad. Bet he's got a portrait taller than he is. That's your first clue to a total ass. Fact. What do you think about the people who have gathered? Which? The ones who do things or the ones who give orders? Thoughts about Cassandra? Not as buttoned up as she plays, right? Tough, though. I'd stand behind her in front of anything. What about Solus? Solus? <laughs> His head's crammed up a thousand years ago. Anything to say about Varric? Varric? Too clever. Always saying something, but never saying it straight. What's your opinion of Vivienne? She's a bitch, but she knows. She better. What do you think about our spy master, ambassador, and commander? Liliana is pretty in places. I swear I've seen her too. Or heard she used to play. But that'd be mad. Now, Josephine, she's as good at humbling her kind as I am. Just with less mess. Knows her business, if you have to have it. And Cullen. I suppose if you want a jackboot, you get a big one so you can grow into it. Nice hair, though. We'll talk later. Good, right? I'll be here. Chasing mages? That's a Templar's job. A big, armored, pissed-off helm polisher. Not too late to go find some. Or stay home. Is the Inquisition what you thought it would be? Calling an Inquisition is a bit much, isn't it? Does this lot even know what they're chasing? <laughs> Fair question for me as well, I suppose. Everybody following a rumor. At least I'm used to that. Tell me about yourself. What about me? How about the basics? Where are you from? Ferelden. I got that from the accent. Where in Ferelden? All over. Okay, fine. Denimrim for a bit. South, north, wherever I want. There are no connections you want to mention at all? Nope. It's complicated. I don't like complicated. Let's leave it at that. Maybe. Your skill. Who taught you how to use a bow? No one. That seems unlikely. What? I picked it up here and there. Mostly it just makes sense. It's not like that for you. Usually it takes considerable discipline. Hence my question. Hence? Look, I work at it. Practice a little. Not like Cullen and his pets. I mean, you miss, then you don't. Is it that hard to see when it's wrong? Is it an elf thing? <laughs> Most I know couldn't find an arrow sitting on it. Right. Maybe I just make it look easy and shite company. Back still is. No teacher. Where would I find one in alleyways, anyway? You're not like most of the elves I've met. Thanks, right? Or was that an insult? Those I could go barefoot and whine more. Like that soulless, right? Never be as good as we were. Well, who's we? I'm just fine. There's a lot of tradition there. Should it just be thrown away? Your great-grandfather's dead. Why aren't you dead? You're throwing away tradition. That makes sense to you. None of it does in the city. That's why I'm not like an elf. We'll talk later. If you say so. Hey, it's you again. You apparently have a lot of friends. Tell me about your network. It's not mine, right? I mean, it is, but it's also everyone. Everyone who wants to shove it to nobles who hide behind gold and silk. And hats, I guess. 
Is Red Jenny real? Or was she always just you and your friends? Don't know. Don't you care? Not if it works. I mean, Red is scary because blood. And Jenny is... Look, nobody fears the bunch of people who do random stuff. And besides, it's easy. Nobles want a bogeyman because they need to believe normal people can't get at them. Numbers, right? It don't have to be so complicated. Doesn't this mean people think you're guilty of more than you actually do? I suppose. Does it matter? Couldn't it? Important people kill over imagined insults. I've made more than enough real ones, so no. I don't suppose it does. Are you just about pranks and revenge, or is there more to it? Well, it's a weave, right? I grease a ballroom, so a wyvern chasing git has to hunt sprains. Strangely, handmaids leave his vault open. His heirlooms pay off someone else. Maybe clean streets in Kirkwall so someone gets something else. Pish, 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 a lot of people eventually get help or a laugh. Or maybe someone dead, if they deserve it. So who decides who deserves it? You? By what authority? Look, Juki cuts the stable boy's finger off for snagging a biscuit. He's eating an arrow for tea. Deserves it. Most times, it's just fun. And embarrassed, the same as dead for some. Anyway, assassin's a bard's job, innit? No fun, that lot. They might plonk a noble, right? But only to raise another. Plus, I'm shy at singing. Where are the people you promised? If I knew, they wouldn't be much use. That's sort of the point. Look, unless your baddies are rocks or trees, they have people they use. Cooks, squires, wipers. Yeah, I know, wipers, right? You better believe the one with wipers deserve it, right in the... Well, anyway, the little people will be there when you need them, in a million little ways. Seems like there's no way the people who contribute could even know what they're helping with. Don't need to. Maybe some ask for a target, a note like, but maybe they plant something just to help mess with things. I did something and something happened. That's a wish for some people, probably not heralds. Anyway, sometimes I don't even do anything and people think I did because something happened anyway. That's good too. Free payday and free blame rag, but whatever. I can play along if it works for you. You have a choice. Hey, or the Inquisition. <laughs> we'll talk another time. It's all good, innit? Your wish is something, something. I'll be back. As I explored the Fade, I felt the presence of an intriguing artifact in the Hinterlands. If you are willing, I would like to locate it. I have marked its location as best I could determine. We'll talk later. Goodbye. It's good you've returned. We heard of your encounter. You heard? My agents in a city sent word ahead, of course. It's a shame the Templars have abandoned their senses, as well as the capital. At least we know how to approach the mages and Templars now. Do we? Lord Seeker Lucius is not the man I remember. True, he has taken the orders somewhere, but to do what? My reports have been very odd. We must look into it. 
I'm certain not everyone in the Order will support the Lord Seeker. Or the Herald could simply go to meet the mages in Redcliffe instead. You think the Mage Rebellion is more united? It could be ten times worse. I could at least find out what the mages want. No doubt what they've always wanted. Support for their cause. We shouldn't discount Redcliffe. The mages may be worth the risk. They are powerful, Ambassador, but more desperate than you realize. You think the invitation could be some kind of trap? If some among the rebel mages were responsible for what happened at the Conclave... The same could be said about the Templars. True enough. Right now, I'm not certain we have enough influence to approach the Order safely. Then the Inquisition needs agents in more places. That's something you can help with. In the meantime, we should consider other options. There is one other matter. Several months ago, the Grey Wardens of Ferelden vanished. I sent word to those in Orlais, but they have also disappeared. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even consider the idea they're involved in all this, but the timing is curious. That does sound odd, I agree. The others have disregarded my suspicion, but I cannot ignore it. Two days ago, my agents in the Hinterlands heard news of a Grey Warden by the name of Blackwall. If you have the opportunity, please seek him out. Perhaps he can put my mind at ease. And if he can't? Then there may be more going on than we thought. Message for the Inquisition, but I'm having a hard time getting anyone to talk to me. Who are you, soldier? Comissius Aklasi with the Bulls Chargers Mercenary Company. We mostly work out of Ole and Navarra. We've got word of some Tevinta mercenaries gathering out on the Storm Coast. My company commander, Iron Bull, offers the information free of charge. If you'd like to see what the Bulls Chargers can do for the Inquisition, meet us there and watch us work. What can your Bulls Chargers offer the Inquisition? We're loyal, we're tough, and we don't break contracts. Ask around, Val Royo. We've got references. What should I know about your commander? Ein Bull. He's one of those Canari, the big guys with the horns. He leads from the front. He pays well, and he's a lot smarter than the last bastard I worked for. Best of all, he's professional. We accept contracts with whoever makes the first real offer. You're the first time he's gone out of his way to pick a side. Why did your commander send us this information? Iron Bull wants to work for the Inquisition. He thinks you're doing good work. I look forward to meeting this Iron Bull. We're the best you'll find. Come to the Storm Coast and you can see us in action. You came from the circle at Ostwick, did you not? Senior Enchanter Lydia was a dear friend of mine. Were you at all acquainted? Lydia was my instructor. She was almost a mother to me. I never met a wiser soul than her. I understand she was killed by one of her own students when the Ostwick Circle rebelled. I think we both agree that this war must end. The war benefits no one. It must end, and order must be restored. If only the rebels saw things so clearly. Justinia's death has shattered the balance of power in Thedas. If it is not restored quickly, countless lives will be lost. Mages, Templars, innocent people of all kinds now look to the Inquisition to decide their fate. 
I'll try not to let them down. Failure is a luxury we cannot afford, my dear. For almost a thousand years, the world believed it was in the hands of the Maker. And now many believe you are the agent of his will. Whatever the truth is, that belief gives you power. Nobody should claim to know the will of the Maker. Not me, and not the Chantry. Perhaps nobody should. But if no one leads the way, many will be left behind in darkness. I've stolen enough of your time, my dear. Don't let me keep you. Yes? I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor that no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royale. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. If the Circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The Circle is an idea, my dear, and an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first Enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. If you lead all the loyalists, why are you only first Enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no first Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. I've never been to the Montsimard Circle. What was it like? A place of great history and tradition, with the greatest library of magical history outside of the Imperium. It was deeply involved in the great game, as you might expect of anyone living in Orlais. The mages there were quite competitive, but it was stimulating to be always pushed to exceed the abilities of my peers. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? You, my dear, are far too wise not to have realized that many of our colleagues live with their eyes closed. Safe from the world inside their towers, they thought only of the Templars and their own resentment. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means, protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. 
but Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. Yes? I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. Whatever would you like to know? Your accent's not all Asian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Mont Simard while still an apprentice. I'm curious how a Circle mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine. An advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of Enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine? <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Yes? Is there anything I can do to help your efforts at restoring the Circle? After the Circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. It makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the Circle would be in your debt. Don will have more you return. forces for the injured as soon as possible, revered mother. Farewell. And Mother Giselle will treat all demon claw wounds as you suggest to deal with the venom. Good day to you. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on said bastard. Any visiting dig? None in particular. 